So we're going to start with making sure that we know how to look for series and parallel. So when we're looking for series, we're looking for two or more resistors that are along the same wire. So current can only flow in one spot, like these two at the very top. So we'll calculate for series, we just add up the resistances, very straightforward, 50 plus 40 is 90 ohms. There's also a pair at the bottom, 25 ohms and 75 ohms, that we can calculate. And then if we want to look for parallel, that's a little bit tougher, especially when we have circuits that look somewhat complex, not all lined up for us. When we're trying to look for parallel, we're trying to look for places where multiple, like these three, multiple resistors are um, all connected to the same two points with nothing but wire between them. There can't be additional um, resistors in the way. And for that one, it's a little bit tougher. We have one over the equivalent resistance is equal to one over each of those resistor values. You have to be very careful to not just write down that tiny number that's coming out of the fraction, but to actually solve for one over that number. So here that would be 28.5 ohms. We're going to redraw the circuit, and as I do this, I would encourage you to pause the video at, at any time to see if you can do the very next step on your own. I certainly want you to see the solution, but it's going to be so much more powerful if you are able to follow along um, as well. So, I didn't give myself quite enough room, but we still have the um, 60 ohm resistor, but now it's in parallel with that top um, 90 ohms that we calculated. And we can replace that whole red area with the equivalent resistance of those original three. We have the 200 ohm resistor, and it is in parallel with the 110 that was already there, so we'll write those numbers in. And we can add in, somewhere in the way, um, the 100 ohm equivalent resistance that we've replaced it with. So we identified, we simplified, and now we have to repeat the process. We're going to look for series and parallel here. If we look, there's nothing in series, but we have these two resistors in parallel. On both sides of the pair of resistors, they're connected together with nothing but wire between them. So we can get that calculated value. Remember always to get one over the value that's in your calculator. So our final answer is 36 ohms. And here at the bottom, we have three that same way, each of them from one side to the other are connected together with nothing but wire between them. So we'll write that out. It's a little bit tougher to do the parallel calculation, but it really shouldn't slow us down or stop us. And I'm saving time by having the numbers uh, ready in my calculator uh, ahead of time, but uh, recognize that there's not a lot of, of complex math that's going on. Now for us to know what's left, it really is a good idea to redraw the circuit again. So we still have the battery. Now we have on top the 36 ohms. We still have the 28.5 ohm equivalent resistance that we calculated before, and now we have the 41.5 ohm equivalent resistance at the bottom. These are all in series. This is our final step before we get to have our solution written down. And series again is straightforward. We just add up all of those numbers. So we have 36 plus 28.5 plus 41.5, and that is our final answer. We would be able to be done and, um, and 
turn in our work and be finished. What I do want to make sure we understand is that is acting as an equivalent resistor as well. And what that looks like in a circuit is that we have the battery seeing a total resistance for the whole complex circuit we started with on the left of 106 ohms. So that is our final answer. You don't have to redraw it. I just want to make sure that we see what that looks like. You're welcome to pause the video, make sure that you've got all the notes you want to take. And again, you can always rewatch and pause as you go to check it. All right, let's try this second problem on the worksheet. So again, we're going to be looking for series and parallel. And as I set this up, what I'd like you to be thinking about is what were the original things that you noticed? Either you've already tried this problem and you're checking your solutions or you're trying it now. So series is normally the easiest ones to notice. So we'll start with those. On the far right over here, we have a 50 ohm resistor and an 80 ohm resistor in parallel. They're on the same wire. There's nowhere else for the current to go. So they are um, in a line with each other. We can just add them up. And we also have a pair of resistors kind of in the lower left here that are also in series with each other. They're on the same wire. There's no junctions in between them. The current only has one place to go. And so we can add the 25 and the 60 ohms together and get that equivalent resistance. Parallel can be trickier, but we'll find them. So here at the top, only those top two are in parallel. They're hooked together on either end with nothing in between them. We cannot include the 175 ohms yet, even though it looks nicely lined up, because that 60 ohm resistor is in the way. Only those top two are currently in parallel the way that we need to be thinking about that definition. And so we get 44.2 ohms for that top parallel pair. And then in the lower right, we have two that are also in parallel with each other. So lots that we can do on this very first step. It is okay if you did these in a couple of different steps, but I do want us to recognize that we don't need to make these seem longer or more, more drawn out than necessary. Look for all the things you can um, identify and simplify in that first process of identification and simplification. All of those were things we could handle in the first go through, but at this point we will have to redraw because nothing else can be replaced yet. And just like in the first example, I want you to pause the video anytime that you want to check your work and just kind of try it on your own. So we've got the battery. The battery still has the 175 ohms, uh, right after the battery rather. Um, we're replacing with that um, 44.2 ohms, but we can't forget about the 60 ohms on the side. So that's what the top portion looks like. Now we still have that 200 ohm resistor. And running to the side of it, parallel to it, is our new equivalent resistance of 130 ohms. Directly from there, we can see on our drawing, we have um, that parallel pair that we've erased. So anywhere in that area, we can add that 40.9 ohms. And then it connects to the existing 140 ohms and you can draw that exactly as it is. You can replace it um, or bend the wires if needed. But running from that junction out is the last series pair that we were able to deal with already, which is the 85 ohms. 
All right, so we have a circuit that's got a lot going on, which means we can handle each of those pieces. And we want to be very careful not to jump to conclusions about the parallel. One thing that's really um, important to recognize is that these two top resistors, the 44.2 and the 60, they are in series with each other. We have to have that number before we know um, what to do with 175 ohms. So I really encourage you to kind of draw the two junctions for something you think is in parallel and then actively trace out the two places and make sure that only those resistors that you're talking about are in that, um, in that space in between those two hooked together areas. So on the right here, we have an equivalent resistance of 78.8 ohms. And we've got one more parallel that we can do in this step. So one over the equivalent resistance is one over 85 plus one over 140. Never forget to- Oops, from the video editing future, I'll fix that with a that, comment. Um, change, so I've, I've put the equal sign, but um, I was running out of space. That's the equivalent resistance. It's not what the calculator tells us. So that's probably an error that uh, I'll mark in the video later on, but Sharpies, we carry on. So let's redraw. What do we have left at this point? We still have the 175 ohms that we have not been able to do anything with quite yet. But now it is in parallel with this 104.2 ohm resistor. Then we've got the 78.8 ohms then the 40.9 ohms, and then the 52.9 ohms. So that top pair of resistors is in parallel. And I'll write it appropriately this time. The equivalent resistance of those two is 65.3 ohms. And then if we see that that equivalent resistance is now in series with the remaining three, we could stop and um, just add all four of those numbers together. But that's not as obvious and it really requires us redrawing in our heads. So the safer plan is to add these three resistors that we do see together in parallel, in series, sorry, um, and get that number that we can then recognize is, is kind of next to in series with the 65.3 ohms. And so we get 172.6 ohms. But as I noted, those two numbers, they are in series with each other. We can stop and get the final number if it feels very straightforward to us. If it doesn't feel straightforward, then do another redraw step. But you are welcome to find these kind of efficient paths if these types of circuits and these types of problems are starting to make sense to you. I don't want you to feel like you have to do the long way, but I do want us to recognize that there is no way to look at the original circuit and get to a final number without doing a couple of identify, simplify steps. So if we were to redraw a third time, so if we handled that by looking at what that 65.3 ohms looks like with the 172.6, we'd be able to recognize that those are together. Never forget units. <laughs> and 
And then those are in series with each other, just like I said. So no matter how we got there, we add those two numbers together and we get our final result. If you're struggling with these types of problems, I encourage you to rewatch the portion of the video that is where you get stuck and pause it as needed and try it um, or come to student support hours. I want to help you be successful. Thanks for watching.